This right here is a new piece of equipment for my channel known as a thermal imaging gun. This right here is a steam fisher from an underground active mine fire. To find out how I'm going to use this, all you need to do is come along with me. Before we continue, I just want to state that by sitting next to this steam fisher, I'm in no harm at all. Any gases or fumes coming out are heavily diluted in the atmosphere, so there's no cause for concern with me sitting next to this even if it does blow on me. But I want to welcome you back to the not so famous town of Laurel Run, Pennsylvania, where there is an active underground mine fire burning beneath my feet as we speak. I was here a few months ago to do a video covering the entire back history on the town and the mine fire itself. If you haven't seen that video, you'll find it linked down below in the description and the pinned comment. But I'm back today for a very specific reason, and that is to test out my new tool, my new piece of equipment for the channel, the thermal imaging camera. Now this is something I've been having my eyes on for a while and no pun intended, finally pulled the trigger on it. I was doing a lot of research, narrowing it down to a few different ones and based on the reviews and results of testing, this seems to be like a great choice. If you do want to get information on this particular gun, I will also have a link down below in the description. I did buy it off Amazon and so far I am pretty happy with it. Now here at the Laurel Run underground mine fire area, there is numerous fissures and vents, just like this one right here. And we're gonna go back to those ones that we visited in the first video to see how it looks on the thermal gun, but also to use this to hopefully find some new hot zones as well. Now, to bring up the speed on the Laurel Run Mine Fire, well, it started back in 1915, where a coal miner was working in what is known as the Red Ash Coal Mine. At the end of his shift, he hung his carbide lamp, which was still burning, on a piece of timber, forgot it there, that ignited the timber, which spread to a vein of coal, and basically got out of control from there. There were numerous attempts to extinguish the fire, which were unsuccessful, but at one point they actually declared the fire was officially put out. But that's not the case. In the 1960s, the people were evacuated and the town was pretty much demolished. And all that remains here today is barren landscape that is slowly being reclaimed by nature. And there is one area of residence known as Laurel Run Estates where people are living today. But without wasting more time, let's get moving and see how things look on my new thermal gun. Now I did buy this gun for a few different reasons, more than just what we're using it for today. But I wanted to test it out at a place like this because when I come to towns like Centralia and Laurel Run, to find the active mine fire, I'm basically relying on physical evidence. Steam fissures, vent pipes, barren landscapes. And when I do find them, I basically just scan them with my temperature gun to get an approximate reading of the temperatures on the ground. But I think this is gonna allow us to see things in a whole new way and see things that we can't see with our own two eyes. Now there's gonna be a bit of a glare, I can't do anything about that, but I can actually take still images with the gun by pulling the trigger. And I'll share some of those in the video as we make our way about. All right, so I'm gonna bring the gun up here. And there you can see. Now it is color coded, so basically the, the white is the hotter and the dark purple is the colder. And this actively scans for the hot and cold spots wherever you're pointing it. So there's gonna be crosses jumping about on the screen showing or hunting for the hot and cold zones. Now the yellow there, although it looks like fire, that's just the hottest area right now. And it's reading 127 degrees approximately. Now if I point the center cross, that's gonna give me the actual reading on the top left corner, which is varying over 100 degrees, depending on where I point it at. But I just want to show you how this is going to be useful. As we move away, we can actually see where the ground is still warm. Now, even though there's no steam coming out from here, you can see it is warmer than the environment. It's in the upper 40s, but ambient temperature is roughly 37 degrees. Now it shows yellow like that just because that is a whole temperature showing off into the distance. When you do pick up hot and cold, it does change color like that. But the ground is definitely warmer in this area. I think that looks really awesome being able to see the heat source like that. I'm gonna actually take a picture as we speak. Now I can see a couple other small fissures with steam coming out and we're gonna see if the gun will take us over there itself. 
and the ground is definitely warmer. And it's showing right where we are, a small steam fisher. And I know on camera it's not doing it justice. There's a bad glare. I know you can see the camera and probably see me, but just trust when I say that this is actually pretty good resolution. That's why I chose this particular thermal gun because of its quality image. Others are either really pixelated, you can't make out items or objects, or they don't last as far as like distance for scanning. Over there is where we just came from. You can actually see on camera the steam rising. And you can see the ground is warm here as we make our way over closer to another active fisher. And that's what it looks like right there. So all you see is that yellow glowing hole, but that's where all the heat's coming from. Off in the distance, there is another one over there, which we have investigated in the past. We'll probably head over near that one. That is near the vent pipes that are fenced in. And we'll actually be able to scan the pipes to see what the pipes are looking like as far as the heat readings. I just think that looks so cool though, with the steam coming out of the ground like that. It's just emanating and the color dictation just really makes it pop. Even this rock is warmer than the air. Rock is showing 55, 52 degrees closer to the source. Obviously it does get warmer, getting near 60. But the rock itself, even the ground, is warmer than the atmosphere, which again is showing in the 30s. It's a kind of a chilly overcast day. All right. We check this area, we're gonna make our way to a new area. An area I haven't been to before, but I have seen on Google Maps and from other videos. And I believe those videos were within the last year or two. And from what I saw, there was some more active fishers. And we're gonna see if we could try to locate them and confirm that with this gun. As I do make my way there, I do want to share some information with you. When I made my original video here, which I premiered, it had a really great response from everyone being fascinated to find out there's a new mine fire. Not a new one, but one they haven't heard about because Centralia took the spotlight. And this has been burning for over 100 years now. Well, there was talks in the premiere chat and afterwards about people wanting to come here. And there's even the mention of having an event here, a meetup event. And that's something I am kind of tossing around. If I decide to pull the trigger on it, I'm thinking towards the end of March, where it's gonna be not so cold, but there won't be a lot of growth yet, to have a meetup event here, which will be open to the public, free of charge, obviously, because this is game lands and public land. You're allowed to be here. There's nothing wrong with coming here and doing what we're doing, basically investigating the area. And what I'd basically do if people did come is to show them the areas where the fire is burning. Share some of the history again to kind of, you know, bring them up to speed. But show the active vents and fissures. And also let them even use the gun if they wanted to to see for themselves. And to experience it in person because, you know, to see it on video is one thing. To be here in person and to see the steam, feel the heat, and see what the environment's like is a whole different experience. So... If you are maybe interested in coming here for an event like that in the end of March, all I can ask you to do is to stay tuned to my Facebook page and my community tab, where if I do decide to do that, I will make an official announcement stating the date and time that the event will take place. Now, just to show as I am walking here, the ground is cooler. It is in the 30s. It's basically the same temperature as the atmosphere. So right here underneath our feet, there is no hot zones, nothing actively burning. So here's an area I want to show you. Right here is an area of red ash. This is basically 
burned coal. And it looks like it was an old trail and there's a dug up hole here and some discarded items. Now, to my own two eyes, I don't see anything as far as hot zones, steam, anything like that. It looks perfectly normal. But as I bring the gun up, we can actually see there is indeed some warmer pockets of the ground going all the way up to 48 degrees, 49 degrees, where the rest of the atmosphere is in the 30s. So we can actually see somewhere over here, there is some warmer areas where the heat is resonating and making its way towards the surface. So this is indeed working as I was hoping it would to show us some warmer areas or hot areas that we can't see with our own two eyes. Now this is what the hole looks like here. It's a dug up hole. Looks like it was actually recently dug up. That's some fresh material. But this is actually showing there is some heat. Not real hot, but definitely warmer than the atmosphere itself. All right, so we'll keep our eyes peeled and keep scanning as we make our way about to see what else we can find along the way. All right. I think we may have found ourselves a hot zone. See that on the camera? It's bright yellow. There's actually some steam coming out. Let's get over closer and investigate that. Wow, that looks pretty cool. The whole embankment here is just glowing on the camera and there's just steam slowly coming out of it. This is actually a mountain of ash. This is burned coal. And you could cl clearly see it on the camera here. We're getting temperatures over 100 degrees here at the surface, 106. It's reporting. I'm gonna snap a uh, still image so you guys could see. So this is an area I haven't seen before, but it is burning right now. And even underneath this embankment, there's no steam coming out, but it is warm. It's in the 50s. There's actually a lot of burned coal here, a lot of ash. Oh yeah, this is a whole hot zone here, which you can't really tell from the naked eye, but this camera is picking it up. It's near 70 degrees right here. I just wish there wasn't this massive glare. I do apologize about that, but this is pretty interesting. Be able to see what is underneath the ground, even though there's not much evidence in certain areas. It's just barren landscape. Little tiny fissures here and there, just like that one. There is steam coming up. And this more major one, but this ATV trail is basically a warm zone, even up to a hot zone. But that is something else. This is working exactly as intended and allow me or you and everyone to see what's happening beneath our feet. But that spot right there it's over 100 degrees at certain points. And as I mentioned before, if you were to dig down and in, you would get much higher temperatures. And I know others have stated, and I could 100% agree with them, I find this mine fire to be much more fascinating than the Centralia one. For the fact that there's actually multiple points of steam coming out and that it's been burning for so long and that over a vast landscape, there's clear evidence of the mine fire where at Centralia, the fire pretty much moved out from underneath the town. You can only fire, find a couple fissures and vents along big, big mine run road. This is almost like walking on Mars here too. Look at this material. It's so strange. Is there any heat here? No, it's in the 30s only. No heat. But back there, even from here, it's showing up.
I'm actually going pretty far back now to a set of power lines that go from down to Wilkes-Barre that go up the mountain here. And I'm curious if there's gonna be anything back here. So here's where we're looking. That's looking down into the valley to Wilkes-Barre area. You can see the power lines right there. Don't see anything right here, but the thermal gun says otherwise. Not hot, but warmer than the environment. There is some hot spots reaching near 50 degrees. And there's a pole there. It's giving off some heat. Oh, look at that. Hopefully you guys could see that. That is really bright. So what we're looking at is that mountain material right there. And yes, I could actually see some steam coming out. So this, this is another hot zone. And looks like a target shooting area as well. I honestly had no idea that there was this many areas of active steam fishers. And we still haven't even gotten to the ones other than where we started the video across the street near the vent pipes. Oh yeah. I see a little bit of steam right over there on top of the mound and a bigger one straight ahead. There is a great shot of the valley. This must be a more well-known spot for locals because they actually have it spray painted on the rock. Fire with an arrow pointing right here. So we're definitely in the right spot. Oh yeah, that's glowing. 138 degrees, this is a hotter one. Even right here as well, just to show you what we're looking at. The glare is really bugging me. You're not able to see the whole screen. Yeah, I can feel the heat from here, 136, 137 degrees. And you can actually see the steam coming out on the camera. I can't win. If I have it too close, it gets blurry. If I have it too far, there's too much glare. Now this whole ground is warm. Presumably so. It's in the 40s and 50s. Now we're going to get our way over to a pile there in just a moment, which is glowing. But right over here though, there's another area with some more fissures and heat signatures. This is what we're looking at, just broken up rock here. Some soft, wet, damp areas. Not as hot as the other one. It's only reading around 100 and 103, 104 is the hottest. So one thing I like about this one is this is actively hunting for the hot and cold. So 43 is the coldest, 102 is the hottest. All right, let's make our way over to this mound of material here and scan that. All right, so this is our image right here. And here's what the thermal camera sees. It is lots of yellows. It's reading up to 98 degrees roughly for the hottest. 110. So let's see. So basically, right there in the middle of the camera is the hot zone, 110 degrees. Now this does have a laser feature as well, so I could pinpoint the laser to show what it's pointing at, but you wouldn't see it today with it being daytime out. It's more so for dark environments, but this is pointing right at the middle of the screen, right in the middle of the image. 
So somewhere right around here is a real hot spot of 110 degrees, which you wouldn't see it with your naked eye. But this paints a whole nother picture. I'm actually gonna climb up on top of here. Oh yeah, you can actually see what the heat has done to this. This is fractured and split apart from the heat and possibly pressure. But there's a clear void right here where it looks like it was all one piece at one time. And it is broken apart now. And the steam and heat is making its way up. Now the one thing I wanna point out too it's just because we're finding steam and hot zones here doesn't mean that the fire is directly beneath us per se. It could be anywhere from a couple hundred feet to a couple hundred yards away and the steam and heat are making its way through tunnels and fissures to the surface. So just wanted to point out that there is a chance it's directly beneath us. There's a chance it's just kind of flowing up from a different area here. But regardless, it is neat to see how much it is traveling in this area. And this whole material I'm standing on right now is basically a warm or hot zone. My feet, as I'm standing here talking to you, I could feel them warming up in the soles of my feet. Yeah, it's uh, near 70 degrees beneath my feet here. And if we look in the distance, which I'll try to crop in, there's a pretty big vent right there spewing steam out almost the same level as me across the top of the tree line. I don't know if we saw that one or not. They may be a new one. But regardless, we are going to now head up this way to the road, which is going to bring us near Laurel Run Estates. We're going to go down the road and find the active vents and more fissures. I have uh, some distance to cover, so I'll see you guys in just a few moments. But in the meantime, Feel free to pause the video right now and tell me what you think so far. Do you think this is a good investment for the channel? And what do you think it's performance? Your feedback will be greatly appreciated. Walking the pole line here and a little bit out of breath, a lot of up and down, loose material. But I spotted something here. You see what I see? That is a wall forming a 90 degree angle going over and down. That is man-made, and at the bottom of it, there's a bit of a hole there, like a pit. Now scanning that, it's not super warm. The warmest is 51 degrees. But I'm more intrigued as to what it was used for. Whether there was a structure here, or maybe a shaft, I'm kind of perplexed. We'll definitely be looking forward to your feedback on this one. Yeah, I'm just trying to decide. I just wanted to walk on it too to show you scale size. Actually, it looks like it goes <clears throat> over this way too. I don't know. Now I'm kind of second guessing because from here, that doesn't look like it's man-made. It looks like it's natural. We're here, it may be natural, but it looks like it's hand, hand stacked, man-made. This one's actually kind of tough to decipher. Usually it's clearly evident. Yeah, that looks stacked. Either nature did a really good job stacking that naturally, or it is altered by man, even right here. But, that's definite depression there. Makes me wonder if this was a shaft here, a vertical shaft at one time. All right, well, I'll we'll have to maybe come back to this a different day. Now I need to travel through there to make out to the road. Just made my way through uh, that thick of a mess there. That was not fun. I know I'm near the roadway, I did hear vehicles, and did come upon another trash dump here. So we know that we're near civilization. Everything you hear from coffee pots, rulers, solo cups, thermoses, 
shoes, tires, couch. Ah, okay. I'm not losing my microphone here. All right. Accomplished our goal. We reached the road. Now we're going to walk down the road. And somewhere down on the left-hand side will be our first set of steam vents, which to my recollection, they are not actively used. There's no steam coming out, no high temperature readings. We're still going to scan them since we have this. That's going to be the second set past that that is active and that we want to see what kind of readings we get. Well, here is our first fenced in vent pipe area that I mentioned. And let me give it a quick scan here. Yeah, there's uh, not a whole lot going on. The pipes, the first pipe there is reading 50 degrees, which is warmer than the atmosphere. That could just be the residual ground temperature as well. Ground itself, yeah, 50 degrees. So it's basically just absorbing the ground temp around it. Can't say for certain if the mine fire is near this area or if it's just the ambient temperature of the ground itself. But there's no hot spots, no steam, nothing active showing here. So we're gonna move down. There's a pipe or two on the right side and more on the left side. So let's head there next. All right, we got two pipes here. They are kind of submerged, so to speak, but there is still steam coming out. And yeah, 100% confirmation. These ones are actively spewing steam and heat. 121 degrees of the surface temp of that pipe. And I'm gonna snap a, a shot up here just to pay attention though to the resolution. Like I said, this one really has some details as to what you're looking at, including the fence line, the pipe itself. It just shows nice and clear. All right, now we have the other side with two more pipes and the gate is still open. So we can actually get inside there and get up close and personal to them. Oh yeah, that actually shows up really well. The pipe is just glowing. 96 degrees. Not as hot as the other one. But you can actually see the steam coming out on the image. I'll snap another photo so you guys can see. The ground here is fairly warm, 54, 55 degrees. The ground temperature. 56 and then we have again pipe glowing 91 degrees and I actually don't even have to scan with the center cross to get the actual temperature because again the gun is doing it for me it's scanning the hot and cold 37 degrees the coldest which is the atmosphere in the background 91 is the hottest which is the top of the pipe so I definitely love that feature. You could actually turn that on or off too if you don't want to scan or hunt like that, but it makes my job easier. And let's see if we can actually get at the ground right there where the steam is coming out of the pipe is glowing as well, orange. That's right around 91 degrees itself. There is one more spot back here I want to show you. Well, actually there's two more, but I'm only going to show you one of them because the other one I need to return to with a machete or something to clear cut a path to it because we were only able to see with the drone because it was so thick. But back here is another active fissure. And you can see what it did to the landscape here. It just separated and divided it, made like a little cavity. And right here is the hole where there's heat coming out of. And that one is showing up quite well. 
103, 106 degrees, 108. Yeah, you can see the outline of the rocks. The rocks themselves are glowing near the tip of it. And then it gets colder as it goes farther back. Yeah, that's uh, showing up so clear and vivid. Minus the glare for you guys. I know it's not really helping, but this is also going to be used in the future on some paranormal investigations to sense cold and hot spots, more specifically cold spots. This could also pick up residual heat. So for example, I'll actually show you uh, an example. If you press your hand on a surface and take it away, it leaves the imprint of your heat signature from the hand. So you could see if something or someone was there, even though it's not there presently. So it's really receptive and sensitive to temperature changes. Also, other things this could be used for if you're, say, into the, if you're an electrician looking for hot spots in a home, you know, something of faulty wiring, even a mechanic, if, I heard a funny noise, if say like a radiator or something is running too hot, just some examples as to how this could be used, but primarily paranormal investigations and places like this, but I may get creative and use it for other things, who knows. Now just through here is a really thick, dense area with two big fissures. I showed them with drone footage last time. I'm going to be returning with a machete to kind of clear a path to get closer to them because those ones I am intrigued by. They're bigger and spewing out a lot more steam than the other ones, so I want to see them up close and personal. I'm just having way too much fun with this though. I'll snap another photo or two. I can't get over the attention to detail that this, this gun shows. It's really clear and evident what we're looking at. And that's one of the big deciding factors. I was actually going to get Harbor Freight sells one for about half the price of this. And based on the reviews, it showed hot and cold spots, but it was just like a fuzzy image. You couldn't even tell what you're looking at. There was no clear details. And other ones out there for this price, even a little bit more, had less detail as well. So this one for the price point, I feel exceeded my expectations. It performed flawlessly. It's not the most expensive. It's not the best one out there, but it works for me. And this was my first real world test bringing it here to the 1915 Laurel Run Mine Fire. And it worked as intended. Without this, we wouldn't have seen those other warmer hot zones where the ground or the material was just glowing from heat, but there was no steam coming out. So there's areas that we missed from last time and didn't even know there was more fissures out there if we didn't use this and go hunting for them. So steam is a great source of evidence, but this is invaluable to have for things like this. And I will be using it in the future for paranormal investigations, going back to Centralia and coming here again to search more areas to see what we missed. Would well, love to hear feedback on the things we talked about, not only the performance of the gun, but possibly attending the meetup event at the end of March, but more importantly, seeing the underground mine fire in a whole new way. Otherwise, everyone, thanks for tuning in today. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.